I didn't go to Nottingham Carnival this year. I'm probably never going to go again ever anyway because I think, you know, Nottingham Carnival is probably something you do during a certain era of your life. I feel like there's certain things you probably just let go of. I'm a big I'm a big stickler or I'm very steadfast in that idea of like having your life be uh, made up of moments or phases. So when you have a particular moment, you love it, you enjoy it. But when it's over, it's over. And you can kind of savor it and you can kind of look back on it with, you know, with a smile. But trying to relive your past is always a bit lame. So I think the not your carnival thing, when you do it, you do it. When you don't want to do it, you kind of let it go. So anyway, I know it's always fun. I know it's a great time. No one can ever lie and say not your carnival shit. It's not. No new carnival is one of the best carnivals, one of the best things you can do in the UK, hands down. We don't really have a lot of like fun things to do here. Um, there's not a lot of fun outdoor things, a lot of fun, quote unquote, free things to do. So going to new carnival where you get to celebrate, you know, Trinidadian, Caribbean culture in all its guises, black culture in all its guises, London culture in all its guises, from the food to the music to the sounds to the colours to the outfits, all that malarkey. It's fucking amazing. But it is one of those type of things that if you don't go, you don't know how good it is. It's weird. It's like there's certain things that you see, like, I don't know, Glastonbury being a good example. Glastonbury looks amazing on stream. You can tell that looks fucking amazing. People's IG stories, you know, BBC live streams, YouTube live streams. You can tell Glastonbury looks fucking sick. But I think... No, no, Carnival doesn't come across as sick online as it does when you're in person. When you're like in the crowds of people, following these floats around, catching a quick wine, seeing some crazy person dancing off the bridge, seeing some person clearly smashed on their, you know, off their faces, lying on the street, a fight kicking off, food, yeah, that. It's fucking amazing. So you have to actually be there to actually enjoy it. But I feel like this year was probably one of the only years I probably recognize it because I'm on Twitter more. But I saw so many people on fucking Twitter hating on Not No Carnival from the comfort of their own homes and saying how bad it was and all the violence. It's like, bro, you're always going to get an element of like violence and just, you know, pent up aggression and activity just because you put a bunch of people from London all in one spot, all in one area, right? Condensed, like compact into one area or into a couple of streets. You're definitely going to get some issues that are going to arise. But I don't think it's any different to Reading, Leeds, you know, um, whatever that fucking horse race is that all the white people go to and shit. There's a bunch of things. Even boxing. Boxing every other fucking month that happens here in London. But if it's a big card, there's always trouble that kicks off. It just is what it is. That's part of the reason why the government can't really trust us with, you know, these type of events. And they have to be very well kind of um, looked after and policed and stuff. They don't really let people go and do crazy shit because they know if they let us, if they leave us our own devices... We'll turn this whole fucking city, you know, upside down. And in some regards, we'll turn this whole fucking island upside down. So they can't really let us do it. But I don't think the violence thing is that big of an issue. But of course, so the people who are out there who are crying, who are crying and haven't been around for a while, they don't know that this is just a natural order of things, a standard. But the good always outweighs the bad. And not your kind of is legitimately one of the funnest places to go to in London, especially during the summer. And it's a great way to kind of sort sort, you know, quote unquote, end the summer as well. So this is an article courtesy of the BBC. It says eight stabbed and 334 arrests in Nottingham Carnival. Another do mongery type of post. They always like to kind of drum up these posts because I feel like in general, the government has kind of done a good job in terms of just allowing the carnival to exist. Cause I feel like in maybe previous years or maybe in previous times, Carnival would have gone away by now because there's enough bad press around it, a lot of negativity, especially around some of the Mundeles of this flipping country who don't like us having fun, that they would have locked it off. So the fact that they haven't is maybe a testament to the people who organise Carnival, the local people, charities, councils, or just generally the government being afraid of locking off one, you know, one of the only things that fucking niggas have here <laughs> to enjoy ourselves and, you know, turn this country into a fucking one big box park. Like, no one fucking wants that. So continuing on with this article, it says eight people were stabbed during Nonial Carnival with a total of 334 people being arrested during the event. There were three stabbings on Sunday with one victim being young mother who was with a child. She remains critical condition. Obviously not good, but I would say most likely a lot of festivals here in London have similar levels. If there was a festival here in London that was available to be open to the crowd or open air, kind of, you know, open to the public without a ticket and shit, I think they'd have these levels of arrest as well. And arrest can occur for anything. Arrest could be because you pissed on the side of a tree. An arrest could be because you were a bit too handsy with somebody. An arrest could be for anything. It doesn't even need to be something like super aggressive or violent. That's where people could get arrested for. And usually 
in some cases police can be a little bit hands off and chill but in some cases they can also be a very aggressive to kind of stamp out some of that early dissent and send a message to people it continues on monday five people were stabbed and two or uh, and two of those were attacked um have critically injured the Met said a total of 50 police officers have been injured during the event, while most of these arrests were possession of offensive weapon or drug offences. I don't really have any sympathy for officers that get injured. It's the nature of the job. You know, that's what it is. You put yourself in that kind of, you know, in that sort of occupation, you're going to run into some sort of risk. Obviously, you don't want to see them getting hurt fatally, but I don't think, you know, we should flipping weep for police officers, you know, getting injured. It's, it's a part and parcel of the job. It's like a ticket attendant getting pissed off. People are swearing at them. It's like, what do you expect? This is your job. Your ticket attendant, your parking attendant, people are going to say some swear words to you. People are going to be angry at your mere presence. It kind of is what it is. It continues. More than one in five million people were expected at the carnival Monday, a majority of whom police said were uh, had come there to celebrate with a minority of the people um, using as an opportunity to commit crime, including violence. Thousands of officers were deployed in the annual street party, which the force said was um, challenging the event with the police with very dense crowds. The organized annual carnival said it's closely with the most police to dedicated partners. The statement added that there is no excuse for violence and it is not a carnival. The carnival is for people who dedicated um, so much time, love, and incredible creativity to the parade, sound system, music, and food and costumes. The people of Carnival are part of the solution, providing community cohesion, um, a place for young people to gather, experiment, sorry, create, express themselves, and for all generations of communities to come together all year round. It also benefits London as a whole, generating 369 million for the economy, according to recent studies. Yeah, which is pretty cool, right? It was pretty cool. All these people from all over, all over Europe coming over to London to experience carnival was pretty fucking sick you hear so many good stories from people um saying these type of things especially with london being so multicultural it must be quite nice because you don't really probably i doubt you probably get carnival experience in anywhere else in europe apart from london with that level of like diversity you know seeing so many people from all these different caribbean islands africa just different places around the world all congregating and celebrating um carnival must be quite gnarly because you usually only get that when you go to the actual place when you go to actually caribbean when you go to parts of south america so it must be quite cool for those people to see that sort of thing outside of where it would probably really exist and it's done in the most authentic authentic way possible with all the floats all the steel drums and shit all the food all the color and shit it must be fucking amazing for people that go so big up everyone that does fucking attend you got some good pictures here a total of 104 people were arrested on Sunday, with 230 arrests being made on Monday. In two attacks, victims were sustained with slash wounds, and one incident involved a cor uh, corrosive substance. F uh, three firearms were recovered, and uh, 400, sorry, 49 arrests to other weapons. One of those arrested was wanted for attempted murder in Hackney. There were eight stabbings and 275 arrests. <laughs> Yo, the BBC, man, all this negativity. Why don't they make a roundup of all the good things that happened, right? All the people that found love. All the people that, you know, miss connections, people that bumped into relatives they haven't seen in a while, all the fucking, you know, the good, all the, all the, all the happy stories, people that had a rough year and carnival was their time to fucking celebrate and let their hair down and put a smile on their faces or put a smile on other people's faces, like local communities that come together to sort of like, you know, gather their resources to help each other. Like, honestly, why couldn't that be the case? Why couldn't that be the case? Why do they have to be this just, you know, uh, a whole collection of negativity <laughs> don't get me wrong each sentence is very very bad but can we focus on the positive please that possible met police deputy assistant commissioner ade adeleke sorry ade adelikan said on the weekend the carnival was supposed to be for family day but was marred by unacceptable violence we are tired of saying the same words every year he said we are tired of telling families that their loved ones are seriously injured or worse we are tired of seeing crime scenes at carnival during the previous two carnivals one person was killed 14 others were stabbed and more than 125 officers were assaulted so this year was a win this year was a net win because this year no one died from what i'm aware of no one actually died at carnival cross your fingers <laughs> cross your toes <laughs> so this year was a win <laughs> um, about 500 arrests were made in the carnival during the two years measures were taken to reduce crime including officers being given greater stop and search powers and being allowed to order the removal of face coverings the met said that it would work with event organizers for months to secure the event to be fair if you go to carnival and you see somebody with a shiesty on especially considering how hot it is in london and I've been, you know, you've heard me on a pod complain and cry and bitch and moan and be really pathetic about the heat, but it's really crazy hot here in London. 
And it's crazy hot because we're not really a country built for heat. We don't really have air conditioning in most places. There's no real good shade anywhere. There's no real nice places to sit on the outside. Most of our homes are built to insulate heat and not really keep us cool. It's a nightmare. So if you see anybody, if you see anybody in London with a shiesty on, run. If you see anybody with a balaclava, with anything, with anything, ski mask in London, don't hang around them. Don't be in their vicinity. That person's up to no good. Because there's no reason why you should be wearing that. There's no reason why you should be wearing that in this heat. If they're wearing it, they're up to no good. So a bit of common sense is needed also, you know? Don't be a tourist with your phone out, you know, talking about how much money you're going to spend at fucking Nobu, standing next to some guy <laughs> who's covering the entirety of their body apart from their eyes. Like, don't do that. Don't do that. And don't cry about it later. Kensington Chelsea Council said rubbish to the equivalent of the weight of two, 27 London buses had so far been cleared from the streets. Approximately 30% of the waste will be recycled. So, like I said before, I think when it comes to carnival, a lot of the good in carnival, you have to go there and see for yourself. You're not going to get it from these fucking articles from the BBC and stuff. They're always going to ramp on and harp on about the negativity. But in general, as a place to go to celebrate what London's all about, I think carnival is one of the best experiences ever you can do. You, you should always at least go once. I used to go every single year for a long time. Then I stopped because I grew up and it's just not something that I kind of care about anymore. And like I said before, I'm big on phases. Once that phase is over, kind of leave it in the rear view mirror. But if you are a recent transplant to London, you should visit Carnival at least once. At least once. Especially on a Sunday. Because at least on a Sunday, it's a kid's day. So it's maybe not as wrong bunctious as a Monday. But... You should at least experience it on the Sunday or the Monday just to see the vibe because the vibes are immaculate. The sounds, like, you don't ever go anywhere in London and hear volume, music volume of that level because most local councils have very strict rules about how high you can have certain volume, certain clubs are not open, blah, blah, blah. There's loads of stringy, annoying rules around how to enjoy yourself in London. So the noise will just kick you, you know, will just lift you off your feet in the first place. Then the smells, oh my God. Some of the best food you've ever had, the best Caribbean food you've ever had will be experienced at Carnival because all the best London Caribbean restaurants, some of which I don't even know about, some of which are, which are super hidden, underground, hole in the walls, only locals know type of spots, they come to Carnival to show off what they do. They come to Carnival to get new customers. They come to Carnival just to kind of, you know, celebrate Caribbean culture. So all of those places all come, and some of them as well, are just catering services that don't even have fucking shops so you're getting to taste things that you would never be able to taste so you go to experience all that kind of when it's legitimately some of the best food you're ever going to have some of the best vibes you're ever going to have and it's one of the only things that probably makes you fall in love with london apart from maybe festivals and maybe you know maybe when wimbledon comes around and sometimes the football season when it starts and shit carnival is definitely one of those times you're like you know what london's a fucking great city but it's just a shame we don't get that sort of vibes or ambiance on a fucking daily basis or on a yearly basis or you know more often let's just say more often but yeah but big up carnival i'm a big lover of it i don't like anybody else that hates it anybody else that hates it can go and spin on my little toe